Hey everyone, this is going to be my review of the Sony Xperia X Performance, the best smartphone that Sony has to offer. Now I wasn't too kind to the original Xperia X. Uh, for those of you guys who watched my review, I basically stated that the phone's not as good as the Xperia Z5, despite costing more than the Z5. So in this review, I'm going to discuss whether the Xperia X Performance has left a better impression on me than the X. Uh, and I'm going to start off with a general overview of the phone, followed by things I don't like about it and things I like about it. So let's just get right into it. So it has a 5 inch 1080p screen display, it's LCD, uh, 441 pixels per inch. Internally you have a Snapdragon 820 with 3GB of RAM. On the back here you have a 23 megapixel rear facing camera. And on the front you have a 13 megapixel camera. Internally you can either get 64 or 32GB, I have the 64 dual SIM version. Uh, it also has micro SD card support, up to 200GB of storage. The battery is 2700mAh capacity. You have a fingerprint scanner here on the side, although the US variant does not have this feature. You have dual front facing speakers. At the bottom here you have micro USB, so not USB type C and it's quick charge 2.0. The phone is waterproof, uh, IP68 certified, and it does not have FM radio, which is odd because the original X does have it. Alright guys, so now for things I don't like about it. I would say the biggest thing is that this phone is lacking 4K mode. Uh, probably a lot of you already know this, but you cannot record videos in 4K, despite the phone query being capable of it. Now, uh, in this day, pretty much any high-end phone has 4K. Uh, the iPhone SE, the LG G5, the HC10, Galaxy S7 Edge, you name it, pretty much all phones have 4K mode. Uh, so it's definitely a disappointing omission. And I think that the reason is because the phone overheats if you record video for too long. Uh, so if you're recording in, let's say, 60 frames per second, 1080p mode, the phone's going to overheat after around 20-30 minutes. So obviously if it had 4K, it would overheat even faster than that. Um, but still, regardless of the reason why it's absent, it's still disappointing. So yeah, the highest resolution here is Full HD, 60 frames per second. But again, definitely disappointed the feature's not in here. Now the only thing I don't really like about the phone is that it's not that ambitious or innovative. Um, so for Samsung, for example, this year, we've seen the always on display. Definitely an awesome feature there, one that you don't know how much you want it until you have it. Uh, with LG G5, of course, they have the module design. Uh, there's also Quick Charge 3.0 out, even though this is only 2.0. And it does not have USB Type-C at the bottom. So again, it's just missing some of those features, standout features that really separates this from the 2015 phones. Although, of course, the main selling point of it, I think, is a Snapdragon 820. And that does not disappoint. So with that said, I'm going to get into things I do like about the phone. So first and foremost, I really love the performance of the performance. Uh, the speed and everything is right up there with any other smartphone you can buy. Uh, I've ran several speed tests against some of the top end phones like the Galaxy S7 Edge. And the X performance fared very well. So day to day usage, hardcore gaming, whatever you want. This phone should satisfy you. Uh, let me just bring up the Antutu benchmark that I ran for those of you guys who haven't seen that yet. So a score of 138,000, and just to show you versus the ranking, and I've also scored a little higher than this before, um, but again, this is just in line with like the LG 5, HC10, Galaxy S7 Edge, and I really also like Sony's interface. Uh, it's always been very minimal, very close to stock Android, and I feel that they made it even better with the X series. So really, nothing to complain about in terms of performance, and this phone is certainly faster than the Z5. So even though this phone only has 3GB of RAM compared to 4 on some of the high-end smartphones from 2016, uh, don't let that dissuade you because the phone is certainly just as capable. Now the next thing I really like about this phone is the front-facing camera. So as I mentioned, it's 13 megapixels, and it's really a big improvement over the Z5 or most other smartphones that I've used. I think the front-facing camera on this is pretty similar to a lot of the rear-facing cameras on some of the mid-range phones. Um, again, very impressive. And actually, my friend who's always on an iPhone was just using my phone. Uh, I didn't tell them to look at anything in particular, but they opened up the front-facing camera. And they were pretty amazed at how good the quality was compared to their iPhones that they've used. Um, so again, you won't be disappointed with the front-facing camera on this. Now the next thing is the audio quality on this. So again, dual front-facing speakers. Not even the HEC 10 has dual front-facing speakers anymore. Uh, so definitely a great quality to have in this phone. Um, and also, not just in terms of the speakers, but also in terms of just when you have your headphones in. Uh, very clear audio. 
Now the front facing speakers I actually say that they're not that loud, uh, but they are very clear. And I definitely recommend investing in some high-end headphones if you don't already have them, uh, because it's definitely worth it for this phone. So next up is design. Now I have the Z5 on the right here, so I'm just going to show you a quick side-by-side. -side. So one thing I really like about it is that it has this curved glass on the side here. So it just makes it much more comfortable to hold. You see with the Z5 it's a little bit more rough. And the same is true for the bottom. So again, curved at the bottom, much more comfortable to hold overall. And not just that, but also the back. So the Z5 is actually made of frosted glass. Uh, still looks pretty nice, but I personally prefer the brushed aluminum look on the X Performance. One of the nicest smartphones that I've seen. And you only get this brushed look on the X Performance line. I'll show you a quick look at the X. Now this is the gold version of the X. Uh, right here on the right side. So again, not the X Performance, just the X. And you can tell it's still pretty nice made of metal, but it does not hold up to how nice the X Performance looks. And also, of course, as an added bonus, you don't need to worry about the glass breaking like you would with the Z5. Also, I like the fingerprint scanner on this. Now, it's not the best fingerprint scanner, but it's certainly better than the Z5 series. And finally, I really like that this phone is waterproof. So again, the Xperia X did not have waterproofing, the original X, but this one does, IP68 certified. Um, and it's really a great feature, not just for those who are accident prone. Of course, it's always great that if you accidentally spill your water or something on it, you don't have to worry about it breaking. Uh, but it's also great just for if you're outside and, you know, it's raining and you want to make a call. Uh, you can do that without having to worry. Also, you know, if you're at the pool and you want to take some cool pictures, you can do that as well. So, definitely a great feature. I'm glad that they have it on the X Performance. So, great to have that feature in this phone. The Galaxy S7 has it as well, and the iPhone 7 is rumored to have it. So, I think that it's going to be a feature that really takes off this year, and probably in a year or two, you're going to see all smartphones have waterproofing. So, that's it for everything I like about the phone. Now, you probably realize that there's some things I did not cover, some very important things, and those things are more neutral on. Uh, which I guess I can say is a little bit of a disappointment because in the past there would be things that I would be generally happy about uh, like with the Z5 for example. So those things are uh, the battery life. So again this has a 2700 capacity battery. Uh, it does have adaptive technology which is supposed to preserve the battery life over time. But in terms of day to day use uh, I found that it's a little bit worse than the Z5 and I found that it's about average for a phone. Um, so Xperia phones in the past, they've really been known for having excellent batteries. So you're going to have to watch how much battery you're using if you're doing heavy usage just to make sure you can get for a full day. Um, but again, it is disappointing just because in the past Xperia phones have really been excellent with battery life and this is simply average. Now I will have a battery life test on my channel coming up, so stay tuned for that. Now another thing, and this actually might be more of a positive than a neutral thing, is the display. Now this is a beautiful display, again it's 5 inches LCD. Uh, great viewing angles, great colors, great in uh, bright sunlight. But the only thing is it's not 4K or 2K. Uh, 4K like the Z5 Premium that came out last year or 2K like a lot of smartphones are coming out this year. So it's not quite there for me to say that it's something that I really like about the phone. But it is still a great display and I'm certainly content with it. I also wouldn't mind if it was a little bit bigger like on the Z5 for example it's 5.2 inches. On the Z5 Premium it's 5.5 but on the X Performance it's only 5.0. But regardless, it's still a great display. And finally, the last thing that I'm neutral on is the camera. Now, the Xperia X Performance has a 23 megapixel rear-facing camera, just like the Z5 does. Uh, but there are some issues with it. I think it mostly comes down to software. Uh, and I'm hoping that these are corrected in the future. So, there's just some examples. So, the Z5 is actually better in some regards. Uh, I found that in pictures and videos around the corners on the X Performance. Uh, it's a little soft. It's a little blurry. We well, don't have that issue with the Z5. Um, the Z5, of course, you can also record in 4K mode, which is a huge advantage. Uh, I feel that the dynamic range on the Z5 is better. And I also feel that the image stabilization is a little better. So again, I think a lot of this has to come down to software. I am hoping that this stuff is correct in the future on the X performance. Because in theory, the camera really should be better than it is on the Z5. But I'd say it's about the same just because of the strengths and disadvantages. Uh, but talking about some of the strengths now. So I do think that the audio quality is a little bit better on the microphone. I know it's not exactly the same as the camera, but it is related if you're taking videos, things like that. Um, the ISO rating at night has also been reduced. 
So on the Z5, I feel that it's uh, at nighttime, it's really bright, like unnaturally bright. And on the X Performance, they kind of tone it down a little bit. So I think that gives a more natural look. Now the camera on the X Performance is certainly faster on the Z5. Uh, if you have your phone locked in in your pocket, you can actually take a picture in 0 0.6 seconds. I'll show you that real quick. So it's holding down the shutter key. And I actually took a picture even when the screen was off. So if something uh, is happening and you want to take a picture really quickly, you have that option. And I'll show you a brief look at these two cameras to show you what I mean. So again, you see the X performance is certainly faster snapping pictures. And finally, there's also a new feature called predictive autofocus. Now this is if an object is moving, it can predict where it's going to go. Uh, so it can better focus on it. But personally, I found that it only really works if an object is moving really slowly. So I haven't had much use for it. So in conclusion, I think that the Xperia X performance is better than the Xperia Z5. But it is pricey. I don't think it's $150 better than the Z5. I would actually recommend the Z5 over the X performance just because of the price. But again, I do think that the X performance is better. So if you feel that the price is worth it, then go for it. So again, on the Xperia X performance, you're getting a better design. You're getting a uh, much faster speed with the Snapdragon 820. You're getting better front-facing camera. You're getting a better fingerprint scanner, in my opinion. And you're also getting adaptive charging technology, which will preserve the battery life of your phone over time. Whereas on the Z5, uh, you're getting 4K mode, which again, i uh disappointed that they're omitting that from the X-Series. Uh, and you're also getting a better battery. Now, I will say that I wish that Sony was a bit more ambitious with the X-Performance. Uh, there are some great new features coming out in 2016 in other smartphones, like Always On Display, USB Type-C, and Quick Charge 3.0. Uh, the camera also certainly could be better, especially given that I think that most of the issues come down to software. And I wish that the battery was a little bigger. So again, it's still a great phone, but not quite the upgrade that the Z5 was over the Z3 Plus last year. Alright guys, thanks again for watching, and let me know what video you want to see next.